Hello and welcome to Case of the Day. I'm Dr. Crowley. I'd just like to welcome you here for this today's Case of the Day. Uh, we're right before Christmas, so Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, today we're going to discuss a, a case of a lady who came in who just uh, is a follow-up of what's a disease called Bell's Palsy. So Bell's Palsy is a paralysis of the facial muscles on usually typically one side where the nerve that comes out right here behind the ear, below the ear, and then spreads across your face to uh, simulate the muscles of your face. And so uh, when people get Bell's Palsy, um, they get paralysis of their face, so their mouth will droop down on one side, their lid droops down, and they're, they have no wrinkles on the side of their forehead because everything is, all the muscles are paralyzed. And um, this lady, there's a very rare case, actually she had bilateral Bell's palsy and it's taken her a long time to heal and come back to where she's okay now, but uh, she had a rough go for a long time. Uh, typically 99.9% of uh, cases are unilateral. Most of the time when people get Bell's palsy, the thought, many, many studies have shown that maybe this is due to a herpes virus that gets into the nerve here, causes the nerve to swell. The opening from the skull out to the side of your face is fairly tight, and maybe that swelling then blocks the nerve innervation going out to the face. And uh, so you have two different types of herpes viruses that are sort of implicated. One is the one that causes the cold sores. The other one is the for chicken pox and then later on in life when you have had chicken pox and you get shingles or zoster then people think that may be the culprit or cause. No one knows for sure and so uh, but that's the, at least the current thought. Um, things that can mimic when you get paralysis on the side of the face would be a stroke but usually if you have a stroke involving your face you're going to have weakness on your body. Uh, certainly tumors and other things that could cause this as well uh, and so depending on how the course is going of how the recovery is, then there may, may need to be a workup uh, to make sure that there's nothing else going on. Uh, some of the problems with Bell's palsy as far as eyes go is the lid is now drooped down away from the eye. So the eye is now exposed to the air and these people, their, their eyes become very uncomfortable because they're drying out because the lid is not up against the eye and they're not able to blink and so they have, they have trouble blinking and they can't close their eye even. So uh, depending on how severe the Bell's palsy is. Typically the Bell's palsy starts to uh, reach, you know, resolve over the few weeks and people are do okay again, though there are some cases it can take months to get better. And then even then, sometimes they have almost a permanent loss of blinking, that their blinking is not normal even years later. Uh, so if their eyes exposed to the air, then sometimes we have to do something about that. Uh, the, just the, the more basic treatment is, is for them to lubricate their eye constantly all the time, either with artificial tears and or uh, ointment to go in the eye to help coat the eye so it doesn't dry out and become uncomfortable. And if it dries out too badly, then you could end up getting an infection or other problems related to the eye being so dry. On severe cases that are not coming around and getting better, sometimes we actually have to sew the upper lid up to the, the lower lid up to the upper lid and close the eye part way so the eye will stay more comfortable, which is called a lateral tarsography. And that can then be released once the muscle function returns. Um, sometimes that, uh, it is, there's some permanent loss and uh, then you might just do a procedure called a big procedure. You take a little section of the lower lid out and tighten the lid up, but you would wait for several months to do that to make sure uh, that, that the recovery is totally done, that they're not getting, that you're not going to overdo something that doesn't need to be done yet. Um, so there's sometimes surgery is indicated as well about tightening, tightening the lower lid. On some occasion, occasions when this nerve regenerates or comes back, depending on the severity, people can get spasms on their face because they get aberrant regeneration of the nerve that then causes them to have twitching of their face uh, and so sometimes that's a problem which then can be treated with Botox injections. So uh, Bell's palsy is uh, not something that we see a lot of but it does happen. Uh, it's not uncommon. 
uh, maybe one out of 65 people or something in that range uh, in their lifetime could get Bell's palsy. Uh, so it's not an uncommon problem. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, typically it resolves and goes away. There's some belief that maybe diabetes may play a part in this as well. So uh, if you have any questions about Bell's palsy or any other eye conditions, you can always contact us through the website. We'd be happy to try to respond to your questions. If not, may God grant you healthy eyes and great vision, and Merry Christmas.